What's up, guys and gals? Your host with the most, Griever, as always, bringing you guys the next piece of One Piece, Chapter 1038 Review. And quick thing before we start off with this one is, was the chapter good? Yeah. And not necessarily for any one thing. I think that this chapter was good because we, we are seemingly coming to the finale of a lot of the other plot lines. And this is what I asked in my video for manga going forward in 2022. What I want for manga, Wano needs to end. Wano has been good, better than a lot of people have been making it out to be. Yes, there were pacing issues. Yes, there was this. Yes, there was that. But for the longest running arc in the entire series, it has been solid. Not the best, but solid. However, at this point, it's time to wrap up the shit. It's time to wrap up everything that's going on in the raid. It's time for the final battles where all the Topi Ropo are defeated. All the commanders are defeated. It's time for the Yonko to fall, right? So this chapter is sort of giving us a little bit of all the other things that have been going on. Things to distract other characters, things that are were happening, right? So overall, I just want to say right off the bat, I like this chapter for that reason alone. Some people might not like it for that reason, but I haven't heard anything about this chapter quite yet from anybody else. Um, the cover serial continues with Niji and Yonji are actually captured on uh, Coco, uh, Coca Island uh, uh, with Oven watching and, and I think there's pudding there and stuff like that. Uh, captured in the book, right? With the, with the book thing. Um, so Niji and Yonji, that's where they ended up. That's uh, that's quite interesting. I wonder if there's going to be another raid. They're going to attack. They're going to, you know, like try to free them or something like that. Who knows? But, uh, you know, the cover serials, I'm glad that we're back to cover serials. Things that are actually happening in the story. Just things that we're not going to see in the pages of the manga itself. So uh, definitely enjoying that much more than the cover art requests. Um, but anyways, so the chapter showcases, once again, the fact that this fight is still not yet over is Fukuroka Juka Juka Joku Ju versus Raizo, of course, in a battle of nin 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 nin, you know, and uh, they're both trying to, I guess they're both going to perish in the fire or uh, one of them's going to escape or one of them's going to get killed. I don't know. Nobody cares about that, right? But I'm glad that they're finally sh showcasing that this battle is finally just about coming to an end because it's very irrelevant, realistically. It's an irrelevant battle, and we don't really care about it, so I'm glad that it's finally... It seemingly will get probably uh, next chapter or two. We'll get the conclusion of that battle, then we won't see those characters until the end, right? So that's, that's very good, but the things are actually crumbling. The ceilings are crumbling and stuff like that on, I think, the second or third floor thing. And uh, a lot of the samurai are like, oh, man, it's caving in, it's caving in. And, of course, who shows up but our boy, who, for some reason, I've been watching a lot of people's top 30, Bragos, uh, King Lightnings, etc. I've been watching a lot of their streams lately, just in the background. And somehow, some way, people have actually put Sanji in their top 30, which is a little sus. Uh, but other than that, they are also putting Sanji above Jinbei, and that's just insulting and blasphemous in so many regards. And here's the real third in strength of the Straw Hat crew, grabbing the beams and holding up the whole fucking ceiling so the samurai don't get crushed. And saying, you're, and they're like, you're one of the Straw Hats. He's already being recognized as one of the Straw Hats, the helmsman of the Straw Hat crew. And, um... He even, Jimmy even says, like, I'm not going to hold this forever. You guys, get moving. I knew there were some stragglers behind. We need to get the injured out of this floor, you know. And uh, so Jimmy also remarks that the fire is spreading far too fast. And at this rate, so many unconscious and still alive people are going to burn to death. Dying in battle would be less cruel. Like, so basically, there's as we're looking around the place, we see the beast pirates. We see, uh, like, like fodder of the beast pirates. We see a lot of the samurai and stuff. And everybody's, you know, like, just too weak to move. They got their legs cut. They're unconscious, etc. And the flames are, t are taking over, right? But, of course, we know that's from that, which... Kondro shouldn't be alive. Let's just be realistic. This None of this situation should be happening. This is a big fault of Wano. That dude should be fucking dead. Along with Kiku and Kanemon. They should, all three should already be dead. But, of course, we know they are not dead. This is a flaw of Wano. And right now, it's, it's preoccupying our boy of strength, like Jinbei, from getting where he needs to go. Right? Because now he's got to help save... The, the fodder, you know, because otherwise so many people will die uh, basically unceremoniously. Now, 
this is where we also jump down that Big Mom is on a rampage again. And the, and the chapter is entitled Law and Kid vs. Big Mom. And realistically, only like four or five pages, like the later half, not even the half of the chapter is about Kid and Law vs. Big Mom. So that's kind of funny. But uh, Chopper finally actually goes back. Uh, you know, he's like, what the deuce? What the devil? Oh my God, oh, I'm doing a Stewie Griffin thing there. Um, but apparently Chopper finally recovers from his like little, uh, like I'm an old man in, in a tiny little box, you know, sort of idea. Finally goes back to normal and with uh, the side effects, uh, he, he remarks that he pro probably what's going to happen here is that he's not going to be able to go monster point, right? Because he remarks that the side effects have made him r feeling rather fatigued and weak right now. So there's probably very little chance of him going back into monster point or anything like that at this uh at this rate, because he's extremely worried about, more worried about Zoro. Zoro took that remedy drug that um, uh, Miya, Miyagi, Miyagi, I believe is the is the is the doctor from Zoro's name, and uh, he says basically like that super recovery sensu bean thing has a huge cost. And then here's going to be the theory video. Here is going to be the theory video from Teching. Here's going to be the theory video from a lot of people this week. It's going to be about what the hell is the Grim Reaper goddamn showed up. Now, at first, I was like, okay, this is clearly Brooke. Like, Brooke is just, like, showing up and it's going to be like, yo, ho, 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 Zorro, we were trying to scare Beast Pirates away, you know, with this disguise. But there you are. We will help you out. And I was thinking that that could still happen. I don't think it's the case. What I think happened here is that as Chopper brings up, I believe he says something along the lines of, um, like, yeah, we thought it'd be more like a Kuma, another nothing happened moment, right? But what if the effects of the taking the super recovery remedy and the reason they didn't want to use this and the whole everyone bitching that they had a sense of being this whole time, why didn't they use it, is there is hallucinogenic effects. What if it puts you on LSD or a really bad trip for a, a, a period of time alongside of it and they haven't been able to figure out that side effect yet? That's why they didn't use this. It's not just a simple Kuma, oh my god, I'm going to be bedridden for days, the pain's going to kill me. It's not just physical, it's mental as well. If it fucks with your head. That's what I think is actually happening right here. Um, that or... Or this really is Brooke, but Zoro is still suffering. Like either he's seeing something that isn't there. This is my theory. He's seeing something because we see Zoro. He's laying there like asking, who the hell are you? My body won't move. Will you get away from me? Get away from me. Stay away from me. You know, it's like he's actually like, I don't think Zoro's actually afraid, but he's like, he can't move. And it's just like, fuck, fuck, fuck. Like, stay back, stay back. Uh, shit. You know, sort of idea. Right. So he can't understand what's happening to his body. Either he's in a dreamlike state and he's hallucinating all this shit or he is awake but he's seeing things that aren't there, which is once again the Green Reaper. Or three, it's sort of a combination of what I initially thought that this is Brooke, but he's seeing because of the effects of this drug, which I think uh, are clearly mental side effects, the result of this using this drug Bro it's Brooke and Rob in there and they're trying to help him and Zoro's attacking them or something. You know what I mean? Like, he's been... Like, he, he, Brooke is actually there but he's manifested, you know, like LSD style, right? Like, he's on a bad trip. And it is Brooke but it's in a different situation. You know what I mean? So, I think the most likely possibility is that it's not that third one but I think... One of those three is almost 95% the case. Is that it's a drug side effect and it's a hallucinogen is what he's experiencing right now. Whether Brooke is actually there, uh, whether he's seeing somebody else actually there, or he's not seeing anything altogether and he's just there passed out and experiencing a really bad trip in his head. Who, who can really say? But those are my theories about what's ha actually happening. I don't think this Grim Reaper figure is actually physically there in that regard. Um, but anyway, because it's a little late in Wano to introduce the literal Grim Reaper is here. Like, Kaido had the Grim Reaper all along. It's like, wait, what? You know what I mean? Like, no, I, I like that. And it doesn't really go along with the beast aesthetic. And there's a lot of, there's a lot of reasons as to no. Hmm. So that's really cool for a Zoro moment because I like the idea because that sort of fixes 
the idea, and this is why I give faith to Oda. We got to give our faith to Oda is that when people think, oh, this is really shitty writing or something, give him time because usually he explains why they didn't do that later on when it makes sense in the story to explain it, right? So at this point, they don't know about these side effects themselves, but they know there are bad side effects. That's why they didn't bring it up. So that's very interesting to me. I like this. I like this Oda explaining why the super recovery drug was not used uh, prior to this moment in Wano. Um, then we do see the fact that Izo, Izo, who I think right now, I'm going to put Izo as the strongest of the red scabbards. I really am. I think I'm going to put him as the strongest of the nine. That's just me, maybe. But I like if it's not him, it's Denjiro. If it's not Denjiro, it's probably... Uh, Astro Doji. Like, it's one of those three. I think that's just clear. I don't think it's Kanemon or Kiku or any of them. Um, Izu, Izo is looking completely like a badass, and he brings up the fact that even though he might be a Whitebeard commander and stuff, or the Beast Parts are like, damn, why is Whitebeard commander helping them? You know, helping the Straw Hats. And even Izo says, I shouldn't have underestimated their, uh, underestimated their numbers. Basically, they might have been fodder, but they're still members of a Yonko crew, and I really... Like, I thought too high of myself. There were 50 of them, and I took them a little too lightly, thinking their numerical advantage means nothing. I'm a fucking... I'm Izo of the Red Scabbers. I'm one of the retainers of Odin. I'm a Whitebeard goddamn commander. This is nothing to me. This is shit. But these are still members of a Yonko crew. No matter how fodder they might be, they are New World Pirates, and Izo did get a little bit injured by the looks of it. You know, he's got... He took a couple of serious blows. So he's hoping that everybody escaped. Now this is a moment that people are going to talk about as well, is the cipher pole thing. So cipher pole shows up, you know, and they're basically unscathed, but it's the two cipher pole agents that were attacking Drake and everybody. They took him out pretty good. Now, of course, we know that um, these guys did get a little roughhoused by them, but clearly it was a it was a mid diff fight, and he basically states like Izo. We know who you are. We knew you were on this island, but right now we're kind of busy, so we're going to let you slide. Let's just pretend we didn't see each other. We're going to go our separate ways. It's not really in our forte to do that, but we sort of have to do it right now. We've got bigger fish to fry. And he said, we are got our eyes set on the straw hats, and that's when Izo, they're like, and he starts to walk by, and Izo's like, don't take another step, CP0. And it's like, oh, so now Drake and Apu tried, well, Apu, sucked, but Drake and one of the numbers and stuff, they tried. CP0 got a little scuffed up, but they you know, they uh, they basically won pretty handily. Now we've got, as I said, in the conversation as on the, as the strongest of the Red Scabbards, Izo. Weakened Izo is going to fight against two members of CP0. How long do you think he can hold them off? I'm not a huge power scaler guy myself because people try to go way too deep into that stuff. I think Izo stalls them. Izo loses. I don't think there's any debate for that. Izo's going to lose. Izo's going to stall them, and they are going to suffer damage. Like, more damage than Drake or Apu or anybody else did. That, I think, is almost non-negotiable. I think Izo's going to hold them at bay, and when we next jump to it, we're going to see CP0 walking away, but they're going to look like Izo did walking away from the fodder, from Beast Pirates, and go, damn, even beat up as he was... That's a white beard commander for you. You know what I mean? And one of them's going to be clutching their side and the mask's going to be broken in half or something like that. You know what I mean? I'm going to see something like that. That's that's my idea. Now, um, we also jump over to uh, another thing that I really wish this didn't happen, so we're just going to basically skim it, is Yam uh, Yamato up against the weird ink blob monster that's causing all the fire and destruction and makes no goddamn sense that this is even happening. Uh, she tries to freeze the explosives, but that doesn't seem to have... So she's got to fight the blob monster, and seemingly it is somehow strong compared to Yamato, who's got... Con I, I, this thing this thing is a problem. Oda, you shouldn't have done that. You shouldn't have done the blob monster. The blob monster, the, the, the flaming blob monster from Kanjiro is, is a big boom in the Wano arc. Let's just be real. Thankfully, the arc is so long and so big that it's only going to be a minor thing when you just when you think about everything else, but it is a minus. It's a minus. It shouldn't have happened. It shouldn't be here. So, it's just an excuse to distract another powerful figure. You know, the roof collapsing distracts Jinbei. Um, you know, Yamato is distracted by the blob monster. 
you know, like these type of things is meant to distract so that all the characters aren't like, like, what are they doing right now? Like, why are they doing this when Big Mom and Kaido are still afoot, right? It's to keep people away from the battles, pretty much, I, I feel like. And it's pretty apparent, pretty transparent that that's what the reason for this is. And usually Oda covers that up far better, but it's pretty obvious this time. And mm, not, not the hugest fan, let's be real. So we finally do jump back at the end of the chapter to Big Mom and versus Kid and Law. Big Mom kicked the shit out of them. Let's just be real. Kicked the living crap out of them. Uh, and even though they've they've delivered their hits and everything, uh, Big Mom is just too powerful. Big Mom is too strong. And uh, you got to put respect on the title of Bianco. She is the, you know, she's not as strong as Kaido. Most people would agree. She's not as strong as Shanks. Most people would agree. Blackbeard is in the conversation of who's third and fourth when it comes to the Yonko. Blackbeard, to me, is still the weakest. Always was at the beginning of the series. Still is at this point in the series as at the time of this recording. Uh, Blackbeard is still the weakest of the four. In a 1v1, Blackbeard is not going to beat Big Mom or Kaido or Shanks. It's just not the way it's going to happen. Uh, but that being said, you still got to put respect on the name Yonko, on the title of Yonko and Big Mom is the big lady. She's the lady. She's the strongest woman in the series, and she's kicking ass. She's she's treating these upstarts the way they need to be treated. Um, but that being said, still some fantastic attacks here with the K-Room ability, the anesthesia, uh, you know, attack from Law with the Shock Willy and stuff, like completely uh, devastating. It actually really hurts Big Mom and stuff, you know, of course, because the Abi Abi no me it, extremely dangerous, extremely broken and stuff. Uh, slams her back onto the ground. This is where Kid takes all the homies that are, of course, the steel beams and stuff, uses the magnetic force, and uses a, I believe this is a new move or a variation of the move, the Punk Corna Dio. Uh, and it's just this giant massive bull that slams into Big Mom completely. And uh, Kid has actually a, a little nice speech here. Kid says this, and I'll, I'll pull this up just at the end of the video here. Um, now, of course, Viz will translate this differently, uh, but I'm not going to have time on Sunday to be recording, uh, so as far as I know, so I had to, you know, use some scans this week. And uh, basically, Kid says, I bet you do anything, I bet you anything Kaido is reaching his limit up there on that roof, because Big Mom was heading to the roof. You know, after she took down Kid and Law, she was heading to the roof, going to wipe out Luffy once and for all, and they're keeping her on the ground because they just said, if you give it long enough, even mountains can be worn down by the rain. And this is just, that's, I like that. I like the kids saying this. Said, they say you emperors, you Yonko, are invincible. What a joke. There's no such thing. And we're going to prove it. And that's where both Law and Kid scream, I don't care if it kills me, you're not reaching that roof. And it's like, boom, boom, baby. Like, they aren't trying necessarily. They are trying, of course. But will they actually defeat Big Mom? Maybe, maybe not. But they're going to keep her preoccupied so that Luffy, which they both... And people don't like the kids believing in Luffy and stuff like that. But I think it's more obvious to kid. It's not about believing in Luffy and becoming a com uh, companion of Luffy's in that regard. It's Kid recognizing that Luffy is the one. If anybody here is going to actually have a shot at beating Kaido, it's Luffy right now. At this point in time, Luffy is the only one capable of doing it, and they're going to give him, basically, keep people out of the arena while he attempts it. That's basically, it's more of that. It's a begrudging, it's a begrudge respect thing, and a I want to see if he can actually pull it off thing rather than a whole I believe in straw hat Luffy thing. It's not what people are making it out to be. It makes sense for Law to be sort of in that regard, but for Kid, I can explain that away why Kid is working this hard, why Law are or why they're both working this hard because they recognize if Luffy can defeat Kaido 1v1, then you know, that is going to shift everything. Right now, you know, it's just keeping the Yonko apart is the core of the Rooftop Gang. They already discussed that strategy. That's the main reason that they're doing it. And they got to they gotta keep up with the strategy. There's nothing to say. It won't work in the end. So really good chapter, I thought. I thought it was solid. We're wrapping up a lot of the individual things that are going on. Uh, so we can wrap up the plot points. We can get back to Luffy versus Kaido. I think Luffy versus Kaido ends... Uh, 
by chapter 1052 around there that's when I'm uh, proposing that the basically the end the final clash will happen in another about 12 odd chapters Tw more probably more than six or eight so I'm gonna go on the high side I'm gonna say at least a solid dozen chapters until we get the final blows between Kaido and Luffy happening what do you guys think of that let me know down in the comment section down below do you think that's too short do you think that's too long do you think it's just about right this is just right so either ways guys that's the review for chapter 1038 from the piece of One Piece. And we'll see you guys back here next time. So don't forget to like, comment, subscribe as always. Don't forget the fourth and most important thing is to drink, but responsibly, as I always do. And we'll see you back here, guys, next time. No break this week, so that's pretty solid as far as I know. So chapter 1039 coming out next, of course, next week. Looking forward to it. I think we're going to jump back to Kaido Luffy. I really do. I have a feeling. Or we're going to wrap up all these plot points again. We're going to check back with everyone. With Raizo, with Law, with Kid, with Zoro, with uh, Izo, with all these people. Maybe, maybe not. What do you guys think? See you back next time. Bye-bye.